Hey guys, from the DuPont Circle area of Washington, D.C., where I'm going to take you back in time 40 years ago, March 30th, March 30th, 1981, where the eyes of the world were turned to this hotel. Hey guys, welcome to the Washington Hilton, or as it's known by the locals, the Hinkley Hilton. The Hinkley Hilton is where John Hinkley tried to assassinate President Reagan 40 years ago today, March 30th, 1981. The president was giving a speech inside the Hilton and he came out of a doorway here, a special doorway, which was just covered with a small little roof at the time. Gathered over here was the press and John Hinckley. When the president got right to about here, he waved to the press and that's when John Hinckley started firing. One bullet hit James Brady, the president's press secretary. Another bullet hit a policeman, Thomas Delarity, with the D.C. Police Department. A third hit a Secret Service agent who sprawled his body up in the air to take the bullets and shield the president. The president was the fourth victim. As he was being pushed into his limousine, which was parked right over here, a bullet ricocheted off the side and went between the door and the chassis and slid in under his armpit. The president's motorcade the president's motorcade immediately took off up this road, turning left on Connecticut Avenue to head back to the White House. At the time, they didn't know that the president had been hurt. I've been told that some of the vehicles were in such a hurry, they actually drove over this curb on their way to get to Connecticut Avenue as fast as possible. The president's limousines came out of the Hilton and made their way down Connecticut Avenue through this tunnel under DuPont Circle. At this point, the Secret Service was unaware that the president had been hit. The president actually complained to the Secret Service, you broke my ribs, you blank, saying that to a Secret Service agent. The Secret Service agent ignored that and did a body check of the president. He couldn't find any problem, and he radioed to the White House, we're going to Crown, we're going to Crown, Rawhide is okay. Crown being the code word for the White House. And as the cars entered this tunnel, they were making a beeline to the White House. We're going, we're going to Crown, back to the White House, back to the White House, Rawhide is okay. Somewhere under DuPont Circle, things changed for the worst. The president started coughing up phlegm, and the phlegm was a red, frothy blood. At that moment, the Secret Service knew that they had a lung problem, possibly a punctured lung, a collapsed lung. Something was giving a lot of oxygen to the president's blood and turning it a really bright red color. They decided as they were going under this tunnel, they needed to change course. We want to go to the emergency room of George Washington. So this is Farragut Square at the intersection of Connecticut and K Street and 17th Street. We are two blocks from the White House, but it is right here the Secret Service made a life-saving decision. They decided that they should not go back to the White House, but instead turned on K Street and made their way down about six blocks to George Washington University Hospital. It is said that is the decision that saved President Reagan's life. And it was right here where they made that decision. I'm told it's a bit of an urban legend that the police motorcycle escort that was in front of the, of the limousine had already gone about a block or two. They arrived at the White House, turned around, and the limousine was not there. They were like, what happened? Where's the limo? The limo drivers had made the decision without notifying all the escort vehicles and some of the motorcycles actually got to the White House without the president's limousine behind. Not sure, that's kind of an urban legend, but well, maybe we'll do some research on that point. Get the, uh, so this used, this used to be a restaurant called District Commons. But 40 years ago, this building was not an office building. This was not a burger tap and shake, and this was not another restaurant. This was George Washington emergency room entrance. When President Reagan's limousines came up, they came around this circle, they came around Washington Circle, and they pulled up into the emergency room entrance, which was right here at the time. The president got out, waved to the crowd of photographers, walked into the hospital, and then immediately fell over and collapsed, at which time he was thrown on a stretcher, and taken into the ER. Today, it's just an abandoned restaurant because the hospital is now across the street. And you can see right over here, some fire trucks and ambulances delivering a new patient to the Ronald Reagan Institute of Emergency Medicine. Yes, this is actually named 
the Ronald Reagan Institute of Emergency Medicine in sort of memory of their most famous patient, I guess. Now, as luck would have it, the day that Reagan was shot, there was an all-hands staff meeting at George Washington University Hospital. All the doctors were in, all the attendings, all the big power brokers, they were all in this big meeting. And all of a sudden, every beeper in the room went off. Because you remember, this is before cell phones. Every beeper in the room went off simultaneously. The doctors looked at each other and they're like, plane crash, train accident. They didn't know what was going on, but they were all being summoned immediately to their offices. So the ER attendings, and uh, I think it was even the head of the ER department, they went to the ER and they got the word, Rawhide is inbound, Rawhide is inbound. Rawhide is the Secret Service code name for Ronald Reagan. So they were like, oh boy. They got over to the ER. President Reagan was on a stretcher. He looked up at the doctors and said the famous words. He said, I hope you guys are all Republicans. The doctors, who were actually very committed Democrats, looked down and with a reassuring voice said, Mr. President, today we are all Republicans. And then they knocked him out and began an emergency operation to get the bullet out of his lung. An interesting side note I found while researching the story was that George Washington University was one of the first trauma centers in the Washington, D.C. area and one of the most equipped trauma centers uh, for some time uh, to come. The doctors at George Washington had a number of Vietnam veterans who had come back from field hospitals in combat zones, and they looked at the ERs that they were discovering in America and said, this is just not how you do it. This is not how it should be done. And they pushed for a number of changes in emergency rooms that are still followed today in trauma centers around the country. So one other place in Washington, D.C. that I didn't show you that is related to the assassination attempt is here. St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Anacostia, Southeast Washington, D.C. That is where John Hinckley Jr., who was found not guilty by reason of insanity, was kept from 1981 until about 2016. He was uh, released in 2016 into his parents' care with a whole list of restrictions on things he can and cannot do, and is now living in uh, Virginia, I believe. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that little trip around Washington, D.C. and some of the history 40 years ago. Uh, I went down to the Cherry Blossoms today. I did a live stream, but I also filmed in 4K. I'm going to edit that up and I'll put that up. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you again soon. Subscribe, like, comment, all of that, and talk to you.